Following on from my previous tutorial, I'm going to look at creating a slightly more complicated CAD flat with this asymmetric dress here. So just a reminder, throughout this tutorial, I'll be using a number of shortcuts to make things easier. All the shortcuts are accessed using the command key on your keyboards. Some of the common ones I'll be using are command Z to undo. So if you make a mistake, you can press command Z to step back however many number of steps you need to go. Command C is copy. Command V is paste. Command F allows you to paste something directly in the same place you've copied it from, which is really useful when doing CAD flats. Command plus is zoom in. Command minus is zoom out. Command S is save. And if you press and hold the space bar, it allows you to move the screen around. So as a demonstration of the space bar um, moving around, literally if I, if I hold down space bar now, you can see my icon, whichever icon I'm using, just instantly turns to a hand. So it's very, very useful to, to use. And that just allows me to pull the screen around and it becomes a really, really useful tool to use. So moving straight into this dress, I'm again selecting the pen tool and again I just want to have a black outline for my pen tool at the moment so I can see it in more detail. I'm going to zoom in using my shortcuts of command plus and again I can just set out a ruler if I want. You can get the ruler by pressing command and R around about halfway because actually a lot of the dress is um, symmetrical and we can edit the other side so it saves us drawing up the two sides or for them to look irregular. So I'm going to start here in the middle, grabbing the pen tool again, starting in the middle and going up to this top part of the neck. Again, just pulling and holding the mouse button down as I to allow the line to curve. If I keep my stroke at one, I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to click on the line again so it doesn't go off on its own. And I'm just going to gradually kind of curve the line. Again, you want to use as little steps as possible. Some people really start to do loads and loads. You really want to make use of that curve. So I could probably almost get down to the bottom of this sleeve now. And if it's easier, I could always go and get my direct selection tool and take one of these lines at the edge of my anchor point to just edit the line to make sure that it's smooth afterwards. So something like three steps here would be more than enough. I'm then going to get my pen tool and to make sure I'm reconnecting to the line because I don't want to start a new line here because obviously I'm going to have a gap which would make it difficult to fill. So I want to make sure that I'm attaching to that line so making sure there's a little dash um, joining that up. Then I'm going to continue the whole way down. And again, you know, with something like this, you could probably almost get more or less right to the bottom here. So if I just hide my dress in the background, you can see that I've now got this sort of um, black outline for most of the dress. Again, I can always get my direct selection tool if I want to sort of edit it afterwards. But I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to grab that line using the selection tool. I'm going to copy it using Command C. Alternatively, you can go to Edit and Copy. Then I'm going to paste it in front, which is Command F. So I'm going to paste it in exactly the same place that I've copied it from. That would be Edit and Paste in front. I'm now going to hop over to Object, Transform, Reflect. And I want to reflect it vertically. So I click OK. So you can see it's just re reflected it for me. I'm going to click on it with my... Um, mouse and then hold down shift which will keep it level at the same level that I've copied it from and just place it on the other side. So again now if I zoom out and hide the dress you can see we've got it on both sides. So I'm going to go up to the top here and just connect these two lines. So making sure I've got the little dash coming up and when I join it I know it's joined when there's a little circle that appears. So I've now got an outline to the dress as I can see over on this side, it actually, because it's asymmetric, it uh, ends a little bit higher. So what I'm going to do is add an anchor point in here. So I press and hold on my pen tool. It allows you to add or delete an anchor point. I want to add one in, so I'm going to go for the plus one. 
And again, it's really helpful to zoom right in here. It just makes it so much easier to select. So I'm going to add a little anchor point. You can see I can just add the plus there. And if I click off, you can see there's an anchor point, a dot basically added there. So I'm going to come off zoom out now i'm now going to get my direct selection tool because that allows me to just select certain elements on the line so i'm going to click at the very bottom and it should just delete now up to that line if i selected the wrong tool for example like the selection tool you'll find it deletes the whole um the whole line so it must be the direct selection tool because that just allows me to go in and delete that little bottom bit now, this is a nice drapey dress, so I actually want to try and get some of this kind of movement within the drape here. So I'm actually going to use, in this instance, have a play around by using the pencil tool, which can be found up here on the shape tool if you can't see yours. So you can scroll down to get the pencil tool. And in the same way as the pen tool, I can get the pencil to add to that line from that star, whereas when I hover over it, it turns into a line. So I'm just going to have a go at playing around with recreating that line. I can stop at certain times and just rejoin the line again if that's easier. Now this is much easier using a pen or a mouse. If you've got a, a tracker pad it becomes a bit more difficult. You might need to use the pen tool to do this but it's obviously slightly quicker if you can have a go with a pencil or pen tool. And then when I get to the edge, you can see as I'm starting, I want to really join it up. As I get towards that anchor point, it comes up with a little circle. And that means that's one continuous shape now. So if I hide the dress in the background, I can literally now fill that with colour if I wish, because it's one complete shape. So there's lots of things that I can do now. I'm going to continue to, you could continue to use the... Um, pencil tool to add some sort of shape to these kind of areas too if you want again I try to make the line slightly smaller if I'm adding texture within my dress so <coughs> and again I can copy and paste object transform and reflect to place things on the other side just to sort of show the looseness of the dress Likewise down here, it might be that where I've got lots of these kind of areas of shape to the dress and things that I could um, also add just some lines to show that it's kind of draped and uh, bring the, the shape alive a little bit more. So those lines were actually drawn invisibly, so I'm now going to select them and add them as a black line. Now if I'm not happy with them, I can always smooth them out with the smooth tool if I, if I want, if they've got a bit crooked. Or I could use the direct selection tool and, you know, replace kind of areas and things. So just to like demonstrate this kind of drape to that kind of fabric and things. So it's good to sort of experiment with that. Now the other thing I can see is there's actually a seam going across here all the way down to the bottom there. So what I'm actually going to do is separate it a bit. So again, I'm going to get my anchor point tool and add an anchor point in just there. And actually I've got one here. So what I'm going to do is select all the anchor points with the direct selection tool, holding down shift so it selects each one. until I get to the area that I want. I'm going to copy that, click to the side and paste in front, so Command F. So I've basically just copied that, if I hide the dress, you'll see I've just copied that part of the dress there. So I'm now going to get my regular pen tool and try and line up, so I've got the little diagonal line. So I'm going to try and keep this as sort of uniform as possible. See those two lines didn't join up so I'm just going to go back and fix that here. Sometimes that can happen if you missed one out so I've just pulled those apart and I'm going to relink those up. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom there. 
And again, that line's not quite right, so I'm just going to use my selection tool to fix that up. Now I can see also there's another panel here, so I'm actually going to take that line and copy and paste it in front, and then do the same here. So take these, this line at the bottom, selecting all these different anchor points, which takes a, a moment. Again, it's best to zoom in. You can see as I select them, they turn from white to filled in, which is useful. So I pasted that in front and actually that's a bit higher up than I needed to go. So I'm going to add an anchor point in here and delete that area. But what I'm going to do now, I can see there's those two lines that I've created before. I'm just going to take the pen tool and link the two of them up. I might have to do it so I get a bit closer than link them up sometimes if it goes a bit crazy like that. And again, I can just sort of play around with those anchor points. So essentially there, I've got the dress with um, three different panel parts. I'm going to actually make the panel parts a bit smaller and shrink the lines down to 0.5 so it's a bit less um, bold than the outline. And again, I can continue to sort of play around with the lines that I kind of created earlier and things. What I'm also going to do is create part for the back so I'm going to copy and paste that line there and bring that over and actually allow a little bit of room for that back at the back I'm going to copy and paste that on top and reflect it like we've done a few times now and drag that piece over to the other side as well and increase that up to 0.1 thickness as well so essentially there I have my dress. Now I can't see any sort of outside stitching, it's probably overlocked on the inside. So what I can do now is take a look at my trend forecast, look at what colours I might want to use and start to fill it in. So I might want to have this navy for this dress. So I'm going to drag that colour into the swatches. And do the back as well. In the back, I might just um, take the colour tone down a little bit just so it looks like it's in the back as well. Actually, I'm going to take these parts and just send them to the back because I can see that some of my lines and textures there were, um, were hiding. So that basically gives me a whole CAD there. So what I can do to finish that CAD off is select the whole thing with the selection tool and press Command G and that just groups it all together. And then I can start to add it to the rest of my range. So I'm starting to hopefully now begin to build up a range. You want them to almost look scaled so that I can just put this over the T-shirt. So you'd imagine it to be sort of the, the same size as it would be maybe if it's hanging in store. So I'm gradually starting to, to build my range up now.